They just really poor. And some of them people are still alive. I can't remember the name. If you remember the name of the movie, please put it in the comments because that was a good film too. Um, but yeah, but I was talking to someone and um, she was saying that she did like AIDS research and everything. And I was saying like, I noticed like when it comes to the HIV AIDS walk, mm -hmm. it's not as big as like the breast cancer or Alzheimer's walk. Because she was, she was telling me that like a lot of people don't look at it as a real bad disease anymore. So that's why a lot of people don't really do the walk. But I'm like, I feel like the AIDS coalition here, they need to be getting people to really do this walk because mm -hmm. we all know or heard of someone who has been affected by HIV, who has passed away from either HIV complications or from AIDS. So it's just like, we need to get more people talking about it because this is a disease that's been around for 30 years and it's not going nowhere and people are still getting infected and they know the risk of HIV AIDS and other STDs but they do not take those precautions. So it's something that we really need to keep continuing to have the conversation about and end the stigma behind HIV AIDS and other STDs. Like it's, it's a conversation that needs to be had. Um, so we're going to move forward, but I just want to say shout out to everybody that did the walk. Um, I'm going to start pushing early next year for people to do the walk so you can take your plans and get your, um, get your request in because it's the third Sunday of October next year. It's every year, it's the third Sunday in October. So if you'd like to do the walk with me, I hope to see you next year. Um, so on Saturday night, I had a chance to watch Surviving Compton, Dr. Dre. Show night and me, Bobby Shillet, to say, who told a story. And something that I was shocked about was that she was there the whole time during the rise of the NWA. And I did not know that. So now I'm really watching this film. I'm like, wait a minute now. We've seen the Compton film, Straight Outta Compton, and how, you know, they showed their rise, and you didn't see me there at all. Like, she was there on the bus with. JJ, what's up, John? Check it out. Same Bose headphones. Nice. You ever wonder how they work? No. It's Bose Active Noise Canceling Technology. So sound travels. Hey, I got something that you don't want to lose. And now we use the acoustic operator, and this joint. With Bose Noise Canceling, nothing comes between you and your music. Bus with Jerry Heller, she was on tour with them, she's in the studio with them, like she was just doing so much with them. And it, it, it showed how she got, you know, how she got started with them. They found her in the mall singing, they brought her in the studio. A relationship started with her and Dre. And then one night some shit went down. He came home, he was real drunk, and he beat her ass. And I just like, wow, they, they got to it in the first 20 minutes. He beat fucking her ass. But they also show her mother and her, um, I think it's her mother and her grandmother, telling her two different types of stories of what to do if they're in a relationship with an abusive man. And she can say that she would never let that happen to her, but her, mother, her grandmother was telling her, women want to stay anywhere. It's like, kind of family reason, but her grandmother was telling her, get your ass beat right here, anywhere. So, because her grandmother came from the old school. Yes. Where, Shit like that happened and when they stayed with us. Yeah, and they make feel like this happened all the time, men beating up their women. Like, and, and that's something that's true. We all see it. We, I don't really see it now, no. but you hear about, you know, some women. And, and now it's like, if you continue to stay in those kind of relationships, it only get worse. It don't get better. Now, for me, I don't hear too yeah. many. Too, not saying that it doesn't happen because I know it happens. But I don't hear too much of the man beating the woman. But I do hear of, uh, like, a lot of girls out here saying, yeah, man, me and my boyfriend be fucking each other up. Like, mm -hmm. like yeah, he hit me, and I hit him to fuck back. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's normal to y'all. Yeah, we fight each other. And it's almost like, yeah, he hit me, but do you honestly think I'm going to sit there and let him hit me? I'm going to hit him back. And it's like, and they fight each other until they stop fighting, and then they go back to pissing them up. It's yeah. like, that ain't no kind of relationship. No, it's not. I'm gonna be in a relationship with somebody that's fucking me up. Is you gonna get seriously injured or you're gonna die? I'm seriously fucking injured. And I don't wanna get seriously fucking injured here, okay? The only way I'm getting seriously fucking injured is if I'm getting. <laughs> don't do that. 
work in this world. And I hope that, I do hope that a lot of women that watch this find the same strength that she did because if she can make it, you can make it. And I mean, she did, she's been through a lot of shit ever since she was a child. She's seen a lot of shit and she is still here. You know, I appreciate the whole thing of her telling her story, but I just wanted to see more of some of the stuff that she did besides the drugs and getting beat up. I just, I just wanted to see more of that. Like, that's what I wanted. But the film is excellent. It's good. It was really good. And you know, for life for a lifetime film, they they really did in the least. Better, better, way better. Better than Whitney and Bobby. Better. It was better. I swear it was better. And then Misha Lake, she was throughout the film, like walking in on different scenes, talking, and she was oh my gosh, she was crying. When they were showing the scenes, I get beat up. Like, but the girl that played Misha Lay, part of her getting the role was her being able to speak like her. So she spoke like them as a whole. That on how she um, like that she why? she speaks over her larynx box. That's why her voice sounds like this. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I don't know if they can ever reverse it, but it's something inside that goes over certain area, and that's why the voice sounds so high-pitched like that. Oh, that's aggravating. But if you get a chance to see Surviving Compton, go see it. I know the ratings had to be high, because everybody was tweeting about it. I mean, it was ridiculous, but the, the film the film was really, really good. And her grandmother later on in the film, until I, you know, I think I really told her some wrong stuff. You, you think you ain't telling the wrong shit? Okay. Like, you told her some wrong stuff. And I think her grandma, I don't know if she's so loud, but she, she was like, you know, like and towards the end of everything. But Misha Lay, that's a strong woman. She is she's been through a lot and she is still here and I know some people are like, well why is they even doing a biopic on her life and everything like that? Go ahead and watch it. It was really good. Don't even deny it. Just watch it. It was really, really good. And I can't say no more about it. Um, I know also that Beyonce and them did a title concert, title ten fifteen or something like that, and I seen a clip of Nicki Minaj. I just don't, I don't know. I, I didn't watch no performances. I just seen her talking about and a rock needed in Michelle. A motherfucker this. And I'm, like, that is not how you get your point across. I was just upset with that part. But I didn't really, um, I didn't see the concert. I just, I mean, just seeing the blood. I just, well, I saw different parts, but I wasn't really, you know. Yeah. I was <laughs> Stuff that I saw was cute, but I had a oh Beyonce parts. Yeah, it was cute, but I had a better time in the formation tour. Mm -hmm. You know, like the different performances that I saw, they were cute. Was Laura Hill one time this year? I'm not for sure, but I'm sure she was. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I you know, I, I it was cute, but. It wasn't nothing that really, I mean, the different, uh, the effects that she did, the, the uh, hologram, that was awesome. Now, that was cute. That was really good. It was different. It was cute. It took me back to the uh, Run the World from that performance at the Billboard Awards a few years ago. When she, but, but that was really good. But other than that, I mean, I didn't really like the, uh, the way she did all night long, like a different style, oh, like the reggae, from very, 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 I didn't like the way she broke it. And then I don't know, because every video I've seen, I don't know if it's the video, if it's the, I don't know, but it seems like it's like paused in a different spot. Like, I don't know if it was the, I don't know, but it just, oh. I'm taking this fancy. Can I take my yeah. yeah. And I love my mom. Yeah. Yeah. We know that. <laughs> but shout out to Miss Renee, because she always comes in our videos talking about, Y'all always talk about Beyonce, but you know we know she's going to be talking about anyway. Yeah. Whether you see her in a title or not. Right. That's your choice, but you want to keep watching. But right. shout out to you, Miss Renee. I'll see you all the time. Mm -hmm. Talking to you all shit all the time. Well, hopefully, yeah, I, made this, well, hopefully I made Miss Renee happy because yeah. I didn't care for that. Yeah. I had a much better time in the formation. <laughs> I just say that. <laughs> title, I. Yeah. And you know what's so funny too? Because this particular title concert was not even what Bingley. Talked about like last year's was. Yeah, it wasn't really promoted that way. No, like last year's was all over the place. Like you just, but this year it was like the only thing you really heard was about Beyonce's ear ripping, and then you never like I didn't see any of Jay's performances. Did he? Did he go on? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Did he? All I know is that Beyonce, Nikki, and Lauren Hill performed. 
Oh, she did perform. Yeah, she did perform, but that's all I know and saw. I want Lauren Hill to come out with an album. She's been playing for 20 years. Let's say it's going on 25 years. I mean, years. I would like for her to come out with an album, but... <laughs> so, why would she got a mind right or not? I don't know. I don't know. She did talk to that. She did talk to him that whole album together. When she got there on the day. She was like, oh, that is not... We had to she had to do she had to do the best of the I'm gonna listen. She had to listen. <laughs> You're not gonna do that. that. I didn't do that. So um I said it quiet. Election day is twenty two days away. And I'm gonna listen. Let me tell y'all something, okay? Now, this shit is rigged, okay? Yeah, it is rigged. It's rigged when it's not going his way. This Friday, do you want to play a game? Hell no. Ah! Get ready for some music. You got knocked out. Why your body moving? That's my bottom half. Every time I hear this music, it just want to drop. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Start the party. It's okay. Yeah, it is red. It's red when it's not going his way. <laughs> That's when it's red. It's red because it's not going his way. I want y'all to go to the polling polls and I want y'all to watch. See, them. this is the same thing they do. When he was winning the Republican primaries for all those years, oh, it wasn't rigged. Everything was going. But now that we're in the general election, oh, everything is rigged now. Because you know why? Donald Trump at his rallies, rallies that he has with his supporters, all he talks about is Hillary Clinton's emails. How he can't stand the Republican Party, the women that have now come out against him. That's it. He doesn't talk about any policies that he's going to implement. Nothing. Nothing. Excuse me. I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Donald Trump does not really want to be president. He's just seeing how far he can get. And I know some people may not believe or understand that, but when you have a narcissist like Donald Trump, who is just so full of himself, yes, yes, I can believe that. He wants to see how far he can go, just so he can say, oh, well, you know, I, I'll always be down in history as, go down in history as the Republican nominee for president in 2016, right? But I, like I said before, and I'll say it again, I blame the Republican Party for not taking this man serious back in 2015 when he decided to run. They took him as a joke, and he blew all the Republican nominees this year out of the world. Oh, Donald Trump. People, this is also... And I thought about this today on my way to work. I was talking to myself in the car, and I said, wow, this is crazy. This really is the first presidential election that I know of or that I witnessed in my lifetime where both candidates are disliked. <laughs> Nobody likes either one of the candidates. But people are like, we don't like either one of them. But if I had to choose one, I'm going with her. Why? Because she has more experience when it comes to uh, policy making and, and policy. Foreign she has more he had foreign experience. She has more experience. He just has experience with running his fucking mouth and, and grabbing women by the pussy. And grabbing women by the vagina. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Have like, I ever been grabbed down here? No, it never. No, actually, I'm not. It has that. I'm not going to best keep it here, but I don't want nobody to say they call this and say, oh, you talking about me? Yeah, I was. I <laughs> like, can I just say something? I am a freak. I am a freak. I am a freaky. But there are times when I don't want to be freaky. Mm -hmm. And when I get around certain, not certain people, but a certain person, they like to, and it kind of comes off as too aggressive. Mm -hmm. And then this freaky Mikhail becomes like a little boy. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't approve. Like, like, I just be like, ah, uh -huh. <laughs> why do you want no? I don't, don't, why can't we just talk? Don't mm -hmm. touch me. Let's talk. And they always want to grab that <laughs> when I'm not awake. That's all I'm gonna say. And it's like, no, I don't do that because I'm not into you like that. You don't do that for me anymore. That's a long time ago. That's only 10 years ago. You don't do that for me anymore. So therefore, now it's like you come off real aggressive, and I don't like that. And I am a freak, and I love to be hands on. I like doing stuff when the lights are on. I don't like all that dark shit. But when you come around, I'm like, 
I need the third person because because they just want to follow. They just want to follow, and I don't. I don't want the white following me. That I don't want to follow. Follow back. Find the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Why did they get in the bed with you at the 10 years? Bitch, not the bed. Uh, Hell no. Are you kidding me? Why would I even let me know? Like, hmm. Who's the one that got in the bed with you? So, uh, and then <coughs> now I think we're going to do this. Why do I want to do that? I want to do that. Oh, you never did that before? Yes, I did. You. But not with you. And I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to do that. And I know I might, it might hurt their feelings, but, I, but it's the truth. I'm not into you like that. I'm not. So, um, so you like this election shit is crazy. I need all of y'all to make sure that you guys are registered and make sure your uh, registration is updated. In certain states, we are way past the deadline point, but please check in your state to see when is the last day to register to vote if you have not registered to vote yet. It's very important. This is a very important election. We say that every four years, but this bitch, this is a very important election. <laughs> the Howard Trump let a man named Donald fucking ass Trump in the White House. And let me tell you something. I was watching, because y'all know I'm a big history book. Last night, I was watching the American American Experience on PBS, um, and quite often they have different presidential um, uh, programs, and they did a... They did a three-hour special of Richard Nixon last night, and like I just, but I just always watch the stuff like I've never seen before. But anyway, I watched this particular special of Richard Nixon, and when he got to him um, entering the White House as president, because Richard Nixon was really counted out in the early 1960s. He had ran for president in 1960 and lost to JFK. He had ran for the governor of California in 1962, two years later, and lost that. Because even though he was a resident of California while he was vice president, people in California was like, nigga, you've been vice president for eight years. We haven't even seen you like that. Oh, no, you were not come here and run for governor. No. And so so then throughout the 60s, he kind of was like forgotten about. And he would go on different TV shows. And this one particular TV show called the Jack Parr Show. I know I'm really old. And so you know. But anyway, he was on there. And Jack Parr said to him, you know, my daughter said, ask me um, to say one thing to you because she knew you would come on. And she said that she really hopes that you could find a job. Because people just were not electing him for anything. <laughs> they weren't able to do it Richard Nixon anymore. And then came up 1968 when he ran, you know. And of course, Bobby Kennedy was running that year. And Bobby Kennedy didn't get killed. Well, I didn't even show up. Had he not died, he would have run the next president. president. And Richard Nixon would have been given off to two candidates. But I think a lot of people felt like that was Richard Nixon's way into the White House because Kennedy was killed. And the the uh, the candidate that year that he was running against, I think it was Hubert Humphreys, I think it was, who he was running against that year it was just like, yeah, that's just crazy how you just... Like, that's just like, shooting people back in the day. Yeah, they were. They just killing people. They had slaves. They were everywhere. Yeah, they were just killing people. And he got killed, like, a few months after Martin Luther King had got killed. So, yeah. So, anyway, but um, I say this to say because when I was watching it, if you watch the special, Richard Nixon really had, when he was in the White House, he had a stronghold on the media. Something that you would never see today in today's, um, the way it is now. But back then... He picked to choose what news organizations he wanted him for. Like, if he didn't like NBC, no reporter for NBC could be a part of the press conference. He just banned them from different... That's how Richard Nixon was. He ran the shots. Because he always felt like, in the 50s when he was vice president, that the media had always mocked him and treated him wrong. So this was his way now that he was in charge to get back. And as I was watching this special, I said, wow... If this is not Donald Trump 2016, because Donald Trump a, a, a few months ago had more yeah, different times ago, like that. And I said if Donald Trump was to become president, this would be Nixon all over again. He would ban whoever didn't agree with him, he would ban them. And I said, wow, I can't even imagine going back to that time. But there was a time when presidents had that much power where they were able to do that. Mm-hmm. Like now, I can't imagine a president banning a news organization simply because that news organization 
doesn't, you know. Damn, especially if you want to get reelected. Right. Like, you don't do stuff like that. But Donald Trump has a way of doing it. And Richard Nixon did it. And not only that, Richard Nixon, when he ran for re-election in 72, he won by a landslide. He won. Like, people loved him. He won whites and won blacks. I mean, people loved Nixon. But, you know. Then the word of that word he's going to be about it. And that's when the GOP broke into the DNC files and all of that stuff. Yeah. I like what's going on right now. And nobody was getting in trouble for it. It was funny because it's always funny. It's always funny when you watch these old news broadcasts because I, uh, it happened June 7, 1972. And five men had broken to the headquarters um, of the Democratic um, Committee um, at the Watergate Hotel and they broke in there and when they were caught nobody knew who the fuck they were. Nobody knew who they were, nobody knew who they were for, they just didn't know. So when it was when it was mentioned on the night news that evening, it was almost as if, oh this happened and then on to the next story. Because nobody knew who they were working for. And for months people didn't know and then all of a sudden people started realizing, wait, he used to work for so and so who works for so and so who works for President Nixon. And that's how it started coming about. And then I found out last night watching the special, I know I'm going on, but it's I love this story. There was a plane crash in nineteen seventy three and this woman was on the plane and she was killed. Now her pocketbook was found and in the wreckage. And in her pocketbook they found ten thousand dollars. Now come to find out this is what kind of broke the straw that broke the camel's back. They found out that this money that she had was for her husband, who was one of the burglars that broke into the Watergate. And oh, this was basically hush money that the White House was paying these people not to say that they were hired by the way. Mm-hmm. I, I just like this too. I love you know, stuff like this. It was really good. I was just like, oh, look at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> but it took a plane crash for this woman to die. And you're right, look at God, because her pocketbook could have been burned up. And here she is carrying ten thousand dollars, and they traced this money back. Like, well, where did this money come from? They traced it, and it was coming from a, a, a some type of account that was being the money was being transferred to from the White House to keep these people alive. <laughs> and then almost okay, I'm almost done, almost done. And then this is another thing too. So Richard Nixon, he was such a control freak, but he was also very, very uh, paranoid. Now, I'm sure a lot of you heard about the, the secret wirings that he would mm-hmm. record. recording. He set those recordings in the Oval Office and things like that to basically get the people who work for him so that in the future, if they ever turned against him, he would have these recordings to say, no, you. But in the end, those recordings turned out to be his downfall because he picked up a lot well, of people shit. People forget that it was on. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, they hear something recording. Oh. Niggas and spits and all out of his next was a big cat. Okay? Then he'd get around certain black celebrities and love them, but he was a big cat. He talked his shit. Because, like you said, he would forget that these recordings were in. It's a walk. But I'm off of that. But it's really good. We got to watch that. Speaking of documentaries, I watched a documentary called 13. Oh, God. I plan on watching this. Thank you for having me. Uh, so to watch this. You gotta watch it. Watch it. Come on. I plan on watching it tonight. I watched the first hour and 20 minutes. How long is it? It's an hour, an hour 40 minutes. So I, I didn't see the last 20 minutes, but basically it was just showing you how the government and how things have been set up against us mm-hmm. for a long time. Mm-hmm. So because they couldn't get us in slavery, they found a new way to get us through safe slavery, and that was through prison. Mm-hmm. And that's how they can destroy the black race and just do so much in the hand of all different kinds of people. Commentating my boy Van Jones was going there. I know Van Jones, he was just can't reproduce for the man right there. Yeah, black sure man. That's I know. Yeah. You could bring up a lot of families. Yeah. And that's what happened. You know, there's a lot of families, they were families back in the day. And then they blame us for our families we were breaking them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's them. Mm-hmm. And people, black people, go to jail just for minus the stuff that we talked about. We will go to jail for a big time. Mm-hmm. And white people get, uh, Charged with the same crime, they don't probation or like anything, slap on the wrist. But no, they take us away for a long time. And they talked about this 13th Amendment, where I believe this. Look, don't even get me started by him. 
But it's just something like the slavery was over, but they can get you through the prison and you had to go to jail. And it's, I mean, it's obvious in 2010. I mean, yeah, and they then, like, through every decade they talked about, it showed how high the prison rate was up. Mm-hmm. It's like, like, a 2.3 million. Uh, it's not great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Of course. Right. <laughs> of course. Of course. I mean, she's awesome. Yes. And I mean, them people were talking. Yeah, she had people from all different walks of life just explaining everything. Like, it's good. And then, you know, Jay-Z, actually, Jay-Z did a story, like, three weeks ago, talking about Nixon and the war on drugs, and then how it went to Reagan and the war on drugs, and how, but the war on, go ahead, I'll let you finish. Have you know how it was all, yes, but yeah. the war on, yeah, the war on drugs, and that started in the Nixon, during the Nixon administration, in the early 1970s, the war on drugs was really, it was supposed to be this big time thing to crack down on drugs and you but know, it, yeah, but actually really to get black people, people to get that. And I mean, yeah, they were racist. Like they be like, we know how we gotta learn how to talk cool. Kind of like how Donald Trump don't know how to talk cool. But then said, like, that's, that's a big part of it. How they got black people? You know? How you make it think that you really put them when you're against them? Mm-hmm. And I mean, it put a lot of people in jail. And Jay Z did uh, like a story, uh, and. Um, it was like, it was him rapping about what was going This Friday, do you want to play a game? Hell no. Get ready for some treats. We got knocked the hell out. Treats. Why your body moving? That's my bottom half. Every time I hear this music, it just want to drop. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And somebody was drawing it while he was speaking about it. And I'm, I'm surprised that it didn't catch on like, People are not even talking about this, but it is. Jay Z did. Yeah, but Jay Z is doing the story on Kali Browder. Um, he's also in this 13th documentary where he was picked up on the street. They say he did something. They put him in a prison. And after three years, they let him out, but he wasn't free. He wasn't himself because if he wasn't getting beat up by the guards, he was getting beat up by people that was in prison. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he's not going to plead guilty two charges that he know he didn't do. Mm-hmm. But that was their way of keeping people from having things because, you know, with these felonies, like, if they plead guilty to it, this will be on their record, and if they don't, and they go to trial and they lose, they're going to go to jail for maybe 30 or more years. So it was like a lot of people took the plea deal because they had things to provide for and take care of. Like, it's good. And this is not the first time I've heard about this. There's this movie with Alfred Woodard and Nicole Bahari and how this girl, she took on the Texas, the Texas system, I can't remember the name. Oh, it's one of my favorite movies. I, and I could just watch it at any time. And it was to show how they would lock up people from the projects and make them take plea deals, like accuse them of having drugs and they didn't. But because these women had families and shit, they just took the plea deals and had got felonies. And you know, there's a lot of things you can't get with felonies. You can't buy phones, you can't vote. You can't. It's just a lot of things. Sometimes you can't even get a job, a good man job, because you got this on your record. So she was just um, she hired these people and they got her off, and it was and it was recording and just showing how they were setting up a lot of people about putting false charges on people, and and, they, and actually they were paying people a lot on these people instead of they seen them with drugs and they really didn't have it. I can't remember the name of the movie. Always out, is it always out number or out, out, I'm gonna find it. But yeah, it's just, it's a lot of good films out there that just show that things have never been set up for us to win anyway. No matter how hard they try to uh, make it look like, you know, they're for us, they've always been. Here. And this is, and, and, and let me, can I just say this? Mm-hmm. This is one of the reasons why it is important to vote. Now, what we just talked about, I'm sure there's somebody at home and they're saying, well, wait a minute. That's even more reason why I shouldn't go out and vote because the system is not even set up for me after what I just heard the two of y'all just mention. Mm-hmm. But that's where you're wrong because that's American. Sorry, American Violet is the name of the movie. It's good. That's mm-hmm. but see that's where you're wrong because in fact if we go out and vote we can change the system and I'm gonna tell you how we can change it and I'm gonna tell you how we already changed it. Look what we did eight years ago. We elected the very first black man to be president of the United States. That was a change right there when we were able to go out there and exercise our right to vote. And, I mean, and then what did we do? We turned it around and then re-elected him and put them back in the White House. And they were mad that we did that. But we did it. That's even more reason.
them why we should go out there and vote. That's why it's so important to not only vote, but to know who you're voting for. Because you have the power to put the people in office that you want to see in office because you know that they're going to do something to have a, a better impact on your life, or your children's lives, or your children's children's lives. This is the reason why we go out and vote. So we can make an impact. We can make a difference. Yes, it took us, what, over 200 years, but we did it. We got our very first black president. And you never know. If Clinton wins next month, and for the next four years, you know, we're like, we really don't want her, then you know what we have the right to do? In 2020, when the next election comes up, now. there will be a... I'm sure there will be another Democratic a person out there that says, you know what, I've seen these past four years, and the, the people, they voted her in, but they still are not really satisfied with her. And whoever comes up that is qualified and that is smart and has good ideas and good plans, vote them in. I don't think it's ever really happened where a, someone has come up and challenged the incumbent president and then not that incumbent president out. But it could happen. It could very well happen if everyone goes out and exercises their right to vote. I was so happy when I registered to vote. I know y'all get tired of telling the story, but I was so happy when I registered to vote. My very first presidential election was in 2008, and I was a part of putting the very first black president. And I mean, I can say that. That is history. 20, 30, 40 years from now, I can say the very first time I voted in a presidential election, I voted for a man for change, and I was able to witness that change happen. I, I can say that. I can say that. I can say that I thought President Obama get into the White House, not once, but twice. And hopefully on November 8th, I can say that I helped the first female get into the White House. You know, because I feel as though I would rather have the first female than the first clown. And we don't have to have a But I mean, well, I'm talking about a real life clown. With the red nose and the big man, she's going on the hot mics all the time. I mean, he's such a clown that he got on uh, Twitter and just started blasting SNL with their portrayal of him. Like, Donald Trump, they come at you, they come at Hillary, they come at everybody. You are not exempt, Donald Trump. I didn't hear Hillary Clinton going on Twitter and blasting SNL because this is what SNL has been blasting every presidential candidate since the 70s when that's, that's, I mean, I think no presidential candidate or no president got it worse than Gerald Ford in the 70s when SNL first started. I mean, this man was a clumsy, clumsy man, clumsy president. I mean, he was falling down the steps, he was tripping over himself. And I mean, when Chevy Chase, Chevy Chase used to portray him, I mean, it was, and Barbara Walters too, she hated when Gilda Brandon. <laughs> because I heard about yeah. that, Gilda Brandon would do a mock her off my list. And she really was like, and I remember that one interview that Barbara Walters did that she said she walked in on her daughter watching it. Her daughter was laughing and she liked that. <laughs> but her daughter was a little girl at the time and she liked it. Uh, she was like, she didn't she didn't hurt her feelings to see her daughter laughing. But it was comedy. You know, that's what they do. And Donald Trump, for you to be that offended that you go on Twitter and said, oh, this show is, I mean, I do agree with you, but I don't watch this stuff. But, I mean, other people been still, funny lately. That's why, I, that's why it's still on, because other people watch it after 40 years. But for you to go in there and say, oh, this show needs to finally retire, Alec Baldwin isn't funny, this guy's a third. I think he's, when I say oh, he's right. very funny for Jane Donald Trump, because he portrays a clown. And he does it right. And he does it right, a clown. Just like how Trump be like, no, it wasn't me. I yes. didn't do it. Like, he is on point with it. And, um, and then you got the got trash about how messy CNN is. You go back and find this tweet from a year ago when he was on it like, I love SNL, this is the greatest thing, blah, 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 blah. Like, don't change shit up now because they're coming at your neck. And basically, um, SNL is just saying that Donald Trump, you done handed this election over to Hillary Clinton. And basically, you have because the way you're acting. You are 70 years old. There's no way you're going to ever change. Right. I'm 30 and I'm setting yes, a lot set. of ways. Yes, he's set in his ways. Donald Trump, you're set in your ways the way your hair is set on your head. You are set in your ways. Okay? Well, I can't imagine right. no other hairstyle on you, Donald Trump. <laughs> because your hair is set in its way. <laughs> it is. I can't imagine. <laughs> oh! I don't even know how he can his I don't even know how he can his hair like that after he came out of the shower. How do you get your hair back to that? <laughs> I have a hard time getting mine back to that. <laughs> you have to make one appointment, then you have to make another appointment, and wait till the products get there. You ain't got no place to get your hair care thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And the 
Some of your bags have got drawn out of Russell Crowe's hotel room. <laughs> Man, you're like, why is it yourself? What the fuck was she there in the Russell Crowe's hotel room? <laughs> Academy Award winner, Russell Crowe. <laughs> why was a zillion fucking bags in her hotel room? That's like saying why was Little Mama in Beyonce's hotel room? <laughs> why was she in the <laughs> Beyonce, why was you in the chamber doing this? Oh, okay. No, they're not. They're <laughs> no, they're not. That's why I said, why was the Shanti's mom and Tina Lowe's supposed to talk? They're good friends. They're like nothing in common. I've never seen them together. Because they're like nothing in common. <laughs> Somebody's going to find a picture right now. I'm like, I bet you. Somebody's going to find a picture and take me on Instagram with the image of me. What? Woo! The two babies. But wait, so. <laughs> so what happened was, um, Zillian Banks and Rizzo, they're doing a, 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 a movie together. And I think Russell Crowe has something to do with the film as well. So they in his hotel, they, in, they are in Russell Crowe's hotel room. But she started telling Russell Crowe, you don't know nothing about music, what you know about this, what you know about that. And then she's like, you're just a boring old white man. Oh! And she, was this before or was it before? I don't know if it was before or not, but this is the accent that I read. Mm-hmm. So she was talking like that to him, and she was like, I will take a bottle and I will crack it in half and stack it in the sack. Yes, how much you said something like that? He said, I picture the ass coming like that. That's right, he threw it. He threw it. I had the cat for a fucking flip stone. Cat go out. Yup. So now she's saying that, no, he was calling me a nigga, calling me a nigga. I can't imagine. You know how your family member get in trouble and the teacher tell you about well, this family member? You know, because that's how you are right. Because we know, know hey, that's how she acts. <laughs> I didn't see what know. But we know that's how we tell your baby ass. She shows her ass all the time. <laughs> all the time. Well, there is no if, and, the buzz about her showing her ass. If there's one person that's going to show their ass, it's her. Yeah. <laughs> so I say I'm going to sue them because she didn't apologize. I'm going to wait. No, she's not. Cause like, I don't want you to do that, nigga. Why would you want to do that? But why would you want him to apologize? Cause that's how he feels if he calls you a nigga. Mm-hmm. If you call me a nigga, you don't ever have to apologize to me because that's how you feel. What are you apologizing for? Mm-hmm. For what you said. For what you said. For how I feel. <laughs> I don't believe her for her at all. When she starts talking about her and she picked her ass up. And, 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 and do you blame her? No, I don't. No. You got to get and you know what I would say? After I seen him throw her out, I would see her hit the wall of the <laughs> the next wall in the hallway, and I would look at him and say, why the fuck was she in there any damn man? <laughs> you could have had a meet with her in the lobby. And we were going to say, it's a pretty guy. You could have had a meet with her in the lobby. She would have never known what the hotel was in the lobby. Okay, the way they brought the Kim Kardashian, she came back to that hotel in a minute. No, listen, that's what she said. Exactly what she said. Exactly what she said. But like, who am I to judge? Yes, who? Who are we? Especially after I seen that video. I seen some video of both of them in her hotel room. Who is this? Trying to FaceTime me. And I am recording. Okay, so CNN just posted the man convicted of shooting at. George Zimmerman in a yeah. rage incident has been sentenced to 20 years in prison, Florida 36th Monday. Matthew Apperson was convicted of the 10th to 2nd degree murder in September. In addition to the 20 year sentence, he was also given a 15 year concurrent sentence for aggravated assault stemming from the same incident. Seminole County State Attorney Spokeswoman Lynn Bumpus Cooper said, What kind of bullshit is this? This is not the same George Zimmerman who killed Trayvon Martin, but yet somebody who shot at him got 21 tears in prison. Should I be like, I, we should wish death upon nobody. I'm going to be honest. We shouldn't wish death upon nobody. Nobody should be shooting at each other now unless you are for sure that this man shot at you. He tried to stay in your ground and it didn't work. I don't, I don't know what the case was. I, I remember hearing about it a couple of years ago, but I don't know what happened. I don't know all the facts, but I do find it weird that just because you shot at somebody, they go to jail for 20 years, and they didn't even get shot. I think that's excessive. And I don't know what's going down in Florida. That's why I never lived there. And I just come up with some crazy rules. And I still can't believe that George Zimmerman got off for killing Trayvon Martin. I will never, ever... Forgive those people. And I, I mean, I can forgive them. The same just when I look at y'all, right? Like, like y'all have no sense. The same, remember the girl with the Jordan Davis case with the crazy fucking hair? 
The same people who support Jerry Zimmerman are the same people who vote for Donald Trump. The basket of the morals that Hillary Clinton refuses to double down on. You said it, you meant it. Don't even apologize. You said it. You said it. You said it. You meant it. You did it. So don't even, don't even talk about um, when they say um, Hillary Clinton says Americans are the poor. Say, I didn't say all, oh, I said some of your support. And I'm talking about the ones that I say I'm racist shit on Twitter. There you go. Tweet me and say all oh, of the that. that I'm the ones that, that come so comedy central, those are the best of the plurals that I'm talking about. And I don't need they vote because I never made they vote in the first place. Come, come on, Hillary. What is so hard? You so. You're so scared to go there sometimes. Donald Trump goes there and make a fool out of himself, but you can go there because President Obama goes there. You know who goes there? Michelle Obama went there yes. on Thursday. You know who goes there too? Yeah. Me. I'm not at all the time. All the time. Just fucking fuck. Just fucking fuck. Let me tell you something. I'm surprised we were saying nothing about the cat today. Okay. Because every cat got hit in front of us. And they did today. Fall over the steps. I mean, ran over. Okay. But she should have been under that fucking car. No. Off the car, she should have been out the house. So that's a good thing to do today. It's our cats are outdoor and indoor animals. Believe it or not. Come on, man, we go in and out there. Ah, so they see us go outside, they want to see what's what, so fascinating about outside. My dog knows you not to come outside until I tell her ass, come out the door. <laughs> what the fuck do you think you are? You can train the dog. You can train the cat, too. Not to go outside. As long as you can. Yeah, you can. But the dog on the cat is okay. crazy. Right? He pulls his ball, shaking out. I know, I feel so bad for the cat. I try to, I hope I'm not going to be going to SDC. Like, I'm here. I don't be here, Jim. Yeah. And, um, it's not extinguish her, but she's not moving. We'll see if she's here. We'll see if she's here. You do not. She's on her way out the door. She, oh, no, she got hit bad. Yes. I her knees are broken. And she was trying to breathe, child. I don't know. I think but I don't even want to I don't even want to interview on that kind of a note. But, um, and with that, and with that thing sounded good. Tell her we recorded. Um, what I was about to say. Something else. The first, the set, the, the final price, no, the final, final presidential debate right? right? is this Wednesday. October 19th, it comes on 9 p.m. on all the networks. Make sure you watch it. It's going to be good. And I want Hillary, Hillary, this is the last time I show that he's a dickhead. Right. Now he's already done hurting himself. But you need to come out swinging. Don't even let him get away with the stuff. You know he's going to bring up the emails. You know he's going to bring up Benghazi. But you got to hit that. You got to hit him. And you got to hit him real hard. Okay? Because I want to, I want when I come out, when I finish watching this debate, when I watch all the talking heads, I want them to say that you won this. I don't want to hear, oh, Donald Trump, I want, I want you to be 90 minutes. Minutes. 11 points ahead of him yeah. like you are now. I want you to be 20 points ahead of him. Again. And if he brings up your husband, go there. He can't go there. The word. And then he's not there. Yeah. I think we don't already know. But, I, but what I'm trying to understand is I really want to do a video about how I see these Donald Trump supporters that come on TV. Because <laughs> it can be like Clarence Day. Like they're choking out um, Eric, uh, Eric Garner. And, you're, and they were still defending this shit. Oh, I can't breathe. No, he could breathe. He just had like a little choke on him. But there's no way that he really couldn't breathe. And how do we know for sure that the choke that killed him? Right. Maybe it was because he was overweight. Maybe that's why he died. Or maybe he should have just complied in the first place and this wouldn't have happened. Uh -huh. Maybe it's maybe. I mean, they come up with any kind of thing. To they would be horrible lawyers. But they don't. I mean, they try to be good lawyers, but they're not. They're not. There's no way you can defend women coming out against Donald Trump saying that he molested them and fought with them and grabbed them and all kind of areas. How can you defend that? Yes. If you want to bring, if you want to, what they call it, call it state to state. Like, call it thing, call it that, and that, that. Come on, Ian. Call it that, that, that. And Bill Clinton's all about it right now because it happens when something happens. And what, and what, yeah, and what white you know is going to support a fucking mistress, a husband's husband's mistress, and speak good things about them. Oh, she should be hurt. That bitch better get out of my fucking face. Hey, she knew who was mad. Yeah. And you think I'm supposed to ask sympathy for her? Hillary! Get the fuck out of here. I want you to say these things. Like, what? Ask them. I'm talking to all the married women in America. When have you ever supported your husband's mistress? Right. How am I supposed to treat her? No. And, and how is Melania treating these women? You know Melania is going off about this shit. And, and, and speaking of Melania, she's not being angry. And it's too bad. And it's not And I'm going to be watching. You keep talking, I won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so the debate is to when it's Wednesday. 
If this video go up on Tuesday, today's face tomorrow. Otherwise, it's up Wednesday. Make sure y'all watch it, because I can't wait for Thursday, because we're going to talk about it. I can't wait. So y'all be good. Y'all have a good week. Y'all be safe. And we'll see y'all on yes, Thursday or Friday morning. Peace. Yes, Lord. It's an awesome shit. My secret? I just didn't want the same filling beer on game day. Then I found Smirnoff Ice Electric Flavors. No carbonation, crazy delicious. Found them. What's this?